Good afternoon. This is Chris Brecher with Brecher Trading. December 28th, 2017. Close to the end of the year, but closer to spring training and baseball. I'm very excited in it. December 28th today. What am I going to be talking about? Sticking my neck out with the shippers. Now, there are a million different puns I could have done. Dipping my toe in the water with the with the shippers and so forth. But really, when it comes down to it, I'm sticking my neck out recommending any of the dogs this year, which are the shippers. But how I looked at it, and I'll show you how I rationalized it. With silver, gold, and copper rallying, these unloved stocks could have their moment in the sun in here. These stocks, ever since dry ships last year, went from 1 to 150, and now is reverse split as many times as UVXY. If they just haven't been the same. And I think it's time to start looking at some of these stocks. And we'll go over that in a minute. To let you know, Brecher Trading. You finally have my old mug here where I don't look all Photoshop, where I look like I'm still in high school. A realistic picture of me. Very elegant. Log in, subscribe now, contact us. That's it on there. Video, about a three-minute video you'll have to endure of me talking about why I, you know, my experience. I should be harping my experience. There are a lot of sites where I see it, where they have tons of subscribers. They've been doing it two years. I've been doing it 37, and I've been trading successfully 37 and teaching successfully for a long time. So just keep that in mind in here. And our site is going to be up in the next 10 days. I'm very excited to actually put a link on social media for a little, uh, just a simple email sign up so you'll have updates and also the videos as long as they're free, which will be until the site goes live. Our site's going to have morning ideas, a lot of chart ideas in the morning. Real-time chat room for the premium members where I'm on at least an hour in the morning, an hour in the afternoon. But what's exciting is I'm going to keep the room open so everybody can uh, chat with everyone else. Plus, if I see something crazy happening, I'll just jump back on because I'm still trading the whole day. The only reason I'm not on six hours and two, one is I don't want you to get sick of me. The other is I'm building content for later in the day and for the videos, scanning and all that. And I, I need some time to do that. But if I see something crazy, I'll jump right on. Forum is going to be a place that's more a record of people asking questions to one another or to me. I can't answer specific market-oriented questions on email, so this is a public forum in the uh, subscribers. Videos, nightly videos like you're used to. Then on the weekends, I'm going to do a swing trade video, uh, which uh, it will be for long, medium to longer term ideas in there, which believe it or not, the shippers were on the swing trade video. And those are more swing trade. They're not a day trade, at least not yet. Learning Center is going to be pretty cool. I did one last night just on an old trader trick that I threw in on YouTube for everyone and on the email. But I'm going to have ATR trailing stop, MACD, the works. What you're used to from me, uh, just short-term scalping, pre-opening trading, and so on. Special events will be for the premium members. For There are a lot of premium members that can't be there all day. I'm going to have things like Wednesday night, ask me anything, Saturday morning, ask me anything, and so on. You'll see the membership levels are going to have little green and dark green. That was my idea, probably a little tacky, but it's sort of a subliminal idea in here. Basic 79 a month, premium 97 a month. Really easy one page for everybody that's computer challenged. I just think you could get the point across of why you should be with me on one page, and that's how I did it in there. So let me show you, I want to go to the meat of the market today. I'm going to give you a hint. See these colorful quote board? I love the quote board in here. We're going to be going over futures, and then we're going to go over why I think you should pitch, pick the shippers. But everybody seems to like my overall market perspective, so let me give you my overall market perspective. I hear from so many people, ESs, ESs going to get killed. The market's going to get killed. It's overbought. Let me just give you something that's very interesting. When the ESs are above everything, and I know intraday they might look like they're going to break something. I'm going to zoom this out so you see what I mean. A lot of people only zoom in right here and see a little ledge. But you got to look at the bigger picture that we still look relatively bullish. This is what I want you to see. Go and put ES upside down. 
Now, if you see that right here, that's where you short. And you ride it down. Did you miss the exact top? Absolutely. But you've ridden it down. This is the ES upside down. The moral of the story, you don't have to pick the exact top. We've had this massive move. If you miss 20 points, big deal. You'll be there for the rest. Let me give you a for instance. Everybody keeps saying, how are you hitting Bitcoin? How are you right every day on Bitcoin? Because I like volatility. Go and maximize this chart. This is Bitcoin. Now, what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to make the chart almost naked. So I hope that's uh, appropriate. We're going to go and we're going to edit studies in here. And I'm going to take off everything except the ATR trailing stop. This is an hourly chart. You see why I'm hitting it? Because the ATR trailing stop is working. The moral of the story, you don't have to try to short at 20,000. You short when it crosses something. You had that sell-off. Guess what? Inverse head and shoulders. And this is the other thing. This is in the MACD learning video I'm going to be doing. When something breaks its ATR trailing stop, all of a sudden then it has these flurries of getting overbought under the ATR trailing stop. That's called overbought in a downtrend. The second it broke here, the conditions temporarily changed. A little stewy pattern. If you're new to ever listening to me, a lot of times when I highlight an inverse head and shoulders, it looks like Stewie from Family Guy. Well, then we rallied. This is why I'm bringing up Bitcoin instead of showing the overall market first. Because maybe you didn't short at 16500 You didn't need to. You wait for the cross. You, you missed 500 points, but you made the next 2500 The moral of the story, you got to just wait. Don't try to think you have to pick the top. That's why I like volatility. Because if you're in a product that's not very volatile and you get hooked right here, you can't make it back. But if something's moving 2,000 points at a time, of course you can make it back. So it's, a, it's very nice to trade volatile stuff. I just wanted to make the point that you don't have to anticipate in here. You can wait and that's a, and wait for uh, wait for the cross. But let's get back to it. What would make me think the market would cross? Well, first is if there's some other indexes that are falling apart and the ESs are uh, just magically levitating. Well, the NASDAQ tried, but like I warned yesterday, that 6450 has held beautifully. Until that falls apart, you got to be real careful. Now, there is one negative, but I'll show you when we get to the futures charts. And that's the German market is slow, slowly trying to break down, but it's not at the point of no return. In fact, let me try to go to a chart in here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here's the DAX. That's what I want you to see. I know everybody thinks head and shoulders stop, but a head and shoulders against support is a little dicey. But if this can break that I know I didn't do that perfect but if it can break this trend line or break at least this support zone get down to here that's a big divergence relative to the SBY but we're just not seeing that yet and you'll have more than enough time why do I say that because those are divergences certain things have the momentum to the upside while they're other like a super tanker it has inertia has the mass to go up on the other hand you have some weaklings like the DAX, but you haven't seen those show up yet. So until you see those, I have to be real careful about ever shorting. And if I do short something, it needs to be already in a downtrend. And they're usually for shorter term objectives because we're overall not in a bear market yet. So keep that in mind. Bonds, this is an interesting situation. Here we go again. 50% retracement. That's where it stopped. That doesn't mean to short yet, like I warned last night. Just because you cross a little here, it created an oversold condition. That's a good way to get yourself stuck. you got to really wait for the rollover, and we don't have that yet. I showed you Bitcoin. Show you the SPY. Same thing. The structure isn't bad yet. So just keep that in mind of what I'm looking at in here. The bonds, I am interested in shorting them, but I need more reasons. I want to make that clear. See this chart? 
You can't tell if this is going to explode up here all the way to here. I would rather sell down here at 152.08. And you might ask, well, why there? Because these algorithms are targeting lows. So when you break this low, it uses as an air hole all the way to here. So just keep that in mind. It's working on the upside, working on the downside. What do I mean by that? Look right here. The second you broke those two tops, you went straight up. I'm telling you, this is all computerized trading. You might as well know what they're using. And the simplest concepts work the best. And what you're seeing right now is that they new break to a new high is working. So just keep that in mind and how, I, uh, how I'm doing that. The other thing I want to show you today before we go into the shipping stocks is about feel. When intraday on a 15-minute chart, the ES has looked like a bear flag right here. You need to put the ESs up at all times against the advanced decline. I'll show you. Here's the ES on the left, two-minute chart. I know it rallied right on the close. I'm talking about back here. And on the right, this is the do dollar ADD, the net New York advanced declines. And what do you notice on a two-minute chart? They just wouldn't go down. So when you got this bear flag here at 10 o'clock, this was going up, not down. That's how you knew this probably wasn't going to work. So that's another one of the learning videos I'm going to be doing on the paid site, which is about how to interpret feel. And it's an art, let me tell you. So let's go into what I'm talking about with the shipping stocks. Number one, futures charts again, and we're going to go back to them. And I'm going to go to charts. I want to show you something very interesting. I always go to Finviz, probably the first thing in the morning, other than news, I look up Finviz. Because I want to see if there are any divergences on the upside or downside. I'm not Mr. Perma Bear here. Do you see, this is called concurrent mode when everything's still pretty high, uh, pretty uh, going up. On the other hand, some of the European markets are going the other way. But, uh, you know, let's see the beginning of the year what happens. But that's not why I showed you the futures charts. I'm showing you because of commodities, energy commodities, precious metal commodities, copper, palladium. These are massive moves straight up. A very impressive, especially copper. What's interesting is that the bond market hasn't absolutely collapsed in the midst of this. But I think if you see the grains start to go up, the oats, the soybeans, if you see them starting to do what cotton's doing, I think you're going to see bonds have a massive leg down. But the reason I'm showing you this is when you start seeing this internal inflation, this demand for crude oil, for uh, nat even natural gas. We know about the cold uh, in the north of how, how bitterly cold it is. But when you're watching gold, crude oil, first thing I think, shipping. I think that finally you're starting to see some life in the sh in just shipping. And also there are Reuters articles last week about a lot of ports have a line to get into them because it's getting so busy with iron, ore, and steel, like I mentioned before. Well, I thought I would revisit these shipping stocks. I know I mentioned them last week, but I want to show you on how they're starting to act. So we're going to go back into this, and I'll show you. I'm going to take this off. Sorry about that. Look at the shipping stocks I have in here. And look at the net change today. What do you notice in there? Almost everyone's up and up a lot. And what's happening is the ones that are the better looking stocks that I pointed out earlier uh, two weeks ago with bull flags, they're already going up. $18 stock, it was probably already financially better than the rest. Glop, another great one. So what happens? The most expensive ones go up. And that then people are like, well, I missed those. What are the next ones I can make? I mean, look at this. My goodness. Look at that rally off the ATR trailing stop on an hourly. Glop, same thing. Well, guess what? You're starting to see some more. That's why I did this about sticking my ne neck out with the shippers. Starbulk, starting to kick in gear. Look what happens if this breaks here. Remember I talked about algorithms care about new highs? If this gets right above here, this could go all the way to 15. There isn't a lot of resistance all the way up. 
Is it out of the woods yet? It's getting there. It needed to hold right where it held. And if this gets above this level, it could at the minimum go up a dollar and a half. So just keep that one in mind. Why do I like this kind of stuff? Because they have options. Do they have a lot of them? Not really, but the open interest is 874 is impressive. But the tens, they're a dollar thirty-five. If this stock goes up two or three dollars, that's a massive percentage move up. And if you're wrong, it's all of a dollar. It's a great leverage play. You know, everybody always asks, well, how do you know if the options are cheap or expensive? Look at what the puts are. The puts are 15 cents. You're only paying 15 cents a premium. I'll do that any day. So just keep in mind, Star Bulk is one I like a lot. I already like TGP. You can't make that kind of chart up. That's what you look for. And what happened again? The second it broke a new high, it exploded. That's what the algorithms are doing on the downside and the up. ASC, do you see why I'm not? And I'm going to go through every one quickly, and I just want to show you. No, I don't like how that looks. GNRT, we hit that one. Some friends of ours, people that uh, I communicate with on this, we were buying the calls in here at, when, at uh, 15 cents. We sold at 90 cents. That was a good one. GNRT was the start of this. What's the moral of the story? It's another one. The second it got over right here, it just kept going. So just go on these and you'll see salt. Here's a really interesting one. This is what I love about trading. Look at the risk reward. If you buy it right when it breaks the ATR trailing stop today, when it has this beautiful pattern, look where you stop yourself. 725, you're risking 25 cents to maybe make two and a half dollars. That is an amazing risk reward. How am I playing this one? I'm buying the Feb. See my position? Now, I didn't buy a lot. Look at the open interest. But I bought these at 50 cents, the seven and a half. If this stock explodes by February, I'll probably double my money. If the stock falls apart, I'll lose 50 cents. Wonderful risk reward. Because as you see on a daily chart, what happens if it breaks here? Could really test the 10 level. That would be an amazing uh, percentage gain. LPG, here's another one. Now, this doesn't move a lot, but as you see, it got over all these moving averages. It's another one to watch. This is why I did a, uh, a special sticking my neck out on the shippers. These are long-term trades. The ones that are over these moving averages and don't have a lot of resistance, could go a lot higher. This is another one I'm in, MVGS. Now, am I anticipating this one? Absolutely. This is, and I know people hate hearing this, but this is a much better buy when it gets over 1027 and clears this. Reason being, you don't know whether this is a bull flag or a head and shoulders top. The only reason you would think this would get over this is because so many of the other shippers had similar charts and they're starting to move above it. That's the, the reason I'm looking at that one. So another one I'm watching, GNK. They, issue, uh, uh, they announced a secondary of over 2 million shares by insiders. It hasn't been priced yet. After that's priced, I'm probably going to buy the stock. But look what, which ones haven't gone up. Dry ships, don't touch that one. DCIX, if you want to go and touch that, fine, but they've diluted the tar out of that one. Star, uh, SB, maybe, sell, safe bul uh, bulkers. But I would stick with these. Not that. And I hope this is what my videos and my site are going to teach you. Why on earth pick the one that looks the worst? DLNG, NAT, look horrible. Now, I know with uh, the tax loss selling, you might see a lot of these have a bump in January, but I'm just saying if those are going to have a bump, why not take this that has some tax loss selling? This was, ah, it's actually up for the year, So, but you might have gotten hooked in here, but I'd rather take the ones that have the better charts. You might get them this way. The problem is a lot of them are very highly leveraged. And the problem is, if you go and buy one that looks lousy on a chart, 
might be look lousy because it should look lousy. So I go for the ones that look the best. DHT, no. TK, yes. EURN bought out uh, the one that I was in. Uh, CMRE uh, um, bought out GNRT. So they're both going up. ANW, maybe. Maybe. And that's the one I have on my watch list. Because look at this inverse head and shoulders. I mentioned this last week. EGLE, maybe. But like I said, I mentioned these last week is developing. The difference is now they're starting to look like they're turning. And now's the time to, that you should be looking to get into these. So I hope that makes sense. The other thing in here, make it easy on yourself. Take the ones only with options. So go into shipping and add like call sizzle or put sizzle so you know which ones have options. Luckily, almost everyone has options. So that's really exciting. And a lot of them could have huge moves and you can buy cheap options. So I hope everybody's liked this video. Thanks so much for listening. I'm very excited about Brecher trading starting soon. Take care.